Good morning, Union Church. Once more, we have come uh, through this uh, pre-recorded online uh, Sunday morning service. Uh, though government has opened up the religious places, we are waiting till end of this month. From October, we'll be able to start our regular worship in a church hall. So we are preparing. Meanwhile, bear with us. We'll continue with this mode. So today, um, Paul and uh, his team will lead us into worship. Let's join them and worship the Lord. Over to Paul. Good morning, church. Thank you for joining us uh, for our online pre-recorded service. We are glad to meet you all in your respective places. And we as a worship team, you know, after a long time, you know, we are uh, experiencing uh, uh, to meet each other. And also, uh, we could see that situation seems to be, you know, uh, changing and we are continuously praying for that. And as we begin, you know, let's, you know, praise our Lord because He is the one who is with us and he is the one who is protecting us and leading us. So before we start our worship, I would request Annie to read us, read a couple of verses from, um, from the Bible. Exodus 15 was 1 to 2. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father is God, and I will exalt him. Amen. So this is, you know, uh, the beginning of Moses' song. After God redeemed them and delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. You know, God was with them, and they experienced, they saw God with their naked eyes, redeeming them, delivering them. You know, even this you know, season that we are going through as a church, as we worship, let's embrace these words into our lives, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, and the horse and its rider cannot do anything to us. And because he is my strength and my song, and as we begin this worship, let's say, Lord, you are our strength, you are my song, I have come to worship you. I've gathered as a family to worship you. And I'm being a part of this video to worship you. And with, you know, with song of praise and bringing gratitude to our God, we are going to enter into a sanctuary wherever we are. You know, Bible says we are the church. And let's let church arise this moment of difficulty. Only when church arises, the situation is going to change. So, you know, we are going to sing this song. What are you turn into wine. You know, our God can do anything. There is nothing impossible by our God. So wherever you are, join with us and put your hands together and let's sing and praise the Lord. Amen. of the blood there's no one like you none like you into the darkness we shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is sealer Awesome and power Our God Our God what are you turn into one? What are you turn into one? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. 
none like you into the darkness we shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is sealer awesome and power our god our god our god is greater our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is sealer awesome and power our god our god and if our god is for us then who could ever stop it and if our god is with us then what could stand against and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against then what could stand against our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is sealer awesome and power our god our god our god is our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is sealer awesome and power our god our god father we want to thank you for giving us this morning of god lord jesus we praise you lord lord we want to see you lifted high and lord we want to enjoy your presence of oh father lord Lord, we welcome you into our lives and we ask you to open our eyes to see your wondrous works amidst of us, O oh Father, Lord. Lord, make us holy that we would see you. Lord, take us closer to you. Draw us closer to you that we would dwell with you and enjoy being with you, O oh Father, Lord. Open our eyes. Open our eyes. Lord, that we would see your holiness. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So please join with us as we worship the Lord. Let's all join together and sing and praise the Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Come on church, repeat with us Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up. In the light of your glory, pour out your power and love 
as we sing holy 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 i want to see you amen let's continue to put our hands together and repeat singing this song amen open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i wanna see you i wanna see you open eyes of god open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i wanna see you i wanna see you see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 you are holy 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 you are holy 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 i wanna see you you are holy 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 you are holy 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 you are holy 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 i wanna see you there is nothing impossible by our god you know if he can set apart his people and redeem them from the hands of the pharaoh why not us god will set us free and is there anything impossible by our god so he is mighty he is majestic and he is with us amen Let's continue to praise him by singing the song What are you turned into wine? Amen. What are you turned into wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is sealer, awesome and power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other our god is sealer awesome and power our god our god what are you turning into wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness into the darkness you shine 
Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Come on church, join the peasants and sing Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is sealer Awesome and power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is sealer, awesome and power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? Then what could stand again? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is sealer, awesome and power, our God, our God, come on everybody, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is sealer, awesome and power, our God, our God. Thank you for being our God. Lord, we praise you, Lord. You are a great God. You are our strength. You are a source of our deliverance, O oh God. You are a healer, O oh Master. We praise you, Lord. How great you are. How great you are. Lord, you hold the splendor. Lord, you are a faithful God. And Lord, you are a creator. And you are a sustainer, O oh Father. Master, this morning, we come before you, before your throne of praise, and we lift your name on high, O oh God. Lord, your name is above all other names. There, there is no one else like you. You are the holy God. Lord, you are seated on the throne, ruling us, reigning over us. You are a master. You are a deliverer, O oh God. We sing and praise you. We sing and praise you, Master. Beginning and the end 
Sing how great everybody, everybody, how oh, great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All the sing, how great, how great is our God. Name above all of the name. Oh, the name above all names, you are worthy of our praise, and our hearts will sing, how great is our God, you're the name above all names, you are worthy of our praise and our heart will sing how great is our God how great is our God sing with me how great is our God oh we sing how great how great is our God. Oh, you are great. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we sing. How great. How great is our God. We praise you. Oh, we lift your name on high, O oh God. Lord, holy God, you are. Father, we praise you. We sing praises to you. May your name be blessed. May you be exalted. You Lord God Almighty, shall we sing? Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the land, worthy is the land, you are holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the land, worthy is the land. Amen. God Almighty reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reign. Hallelujah. God 
Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Father Lord, we praise you. And Lord, we welcome you into our lives. Lord, to embrace us with your holiness. Lord, you dwell in high. And you, Lord, you who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. Lord, I dwell in the holy and holy place. Also with you, Lord, who is contrite and lowly in spirit. And Lord, we ask you this morning that revive us, revive our spirit, revive our holiness and draw us closer to you, God. Draw us closer to you. Let our hearts be tuned to you, with you, O Lord. And Lord, let us, Lord, embrace your holiness in our lives, O God. And to draw, Lord, to dwell with you in majesty. Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this time of worship. As we sang, Lord, we believe and trust in you that, Lord, you were with us. And, Lord, we pray that, Jesus, you would talk to us and let your word would revive us and encourage us. And, Lord, revive the spirit in us. Ignite, Lord, us. Ignite the fire in us, oh, Father, Lord, as we listen to your word. Lord, open our hearts and mind and our soul. Lord, we commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Paul, for leading us into this lovely worship this morning. Um, now, we'll bring our tithe and offering to the Lord. Right? Wherever you are, if you're not part of Union Church, and you can take your tithe and offering to your local churches and uh, honor the Lord through your offerings and through your tithe. Bringing tithe and offering is part of our worship. It's an expression of our gratitude. It's an expression of our sacrificial uh, heart. And uh, nothing belongs to us. Everything belongs to God anyway. So a portion of what God has blessed us, we will bring before him. Bring before him. So you can take your tithe and offering in your hand as I pray. Father, we want to thank you for your blessings upon our lives. Lord, it is you who provide us. It is Jehovah Jireh you provide for us. You are the same Lord who opened the heavens and poured out manna and fed your lakhs of people in the wilderness day after day. Not in a single day your provision failed. So Lord God, this morning we worship the same God who will meet all our needs according to your riches in glory. So this morning, in faith and gratitude, we bring our tithe and offering as part of our worship this morning. Receive them, Lord. Continue to show your favor upon our lives. We also remember those who are going through difficult time at this time financially. Provide for them. Give them the faith to hang on. Give them the faith to trust in you. So, Lord, God's people will be provided for. So into your hands you commit all these resources. Help us to use them for your purpose. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who, those who are used to online transfer, you can use our bank detail that is displayed. And uh, you can transfer online your tithe and offering. 
others can hand over your tithe and offering to our church office. Thank you. Now, we will go into the time of our, our message time. Today, we have a guest speaker from Bombay. At present, he is in, in Bangalore, Pastor Stanley Mehta. He, he doesn't require any introduction. He is our, you know, he's our spiritual father, and he's overseeing our GMA churches, and it's a privilege to have Pastor Stanley preaching on revival this morning. During the season of, you know, anxiety and uncertainty, we need to look up. We need to look beyond our natural situations. We have to see beyond what our natural eyes can see and natural mind can perceive. There is a God who can overrule all this and bring in fresh revival among us. That's what we need in our lives for our church and for our nations. So let's listen to Pastor Stanley Mehta. My topic for today is uh, expecting revival. Expecting revival. Not that I have great knowledge of revival, but about two and a half years ago, I went on my annual holiday and there I picked up some book and that book deeply impacted me. And I felt there was something of substance in that. It has affected me and I have been writing down my thoughts and it has affected me in that it has mobilized my times of prayer, my sense of expectancy, my faith has changed uh, dramatically. And there is a growing sense of awareness that we are, are on the verge of a revival. And why do we expect a revival? Look at the condition of our nation. The condition of a nation is, is terrible. Right now, there is a severe pandemic that is growing and rising. The curve is not flattening. And daily, thousands of people are contracting this particular problem. And uh, deaths are on the rise. And there is no way we are able to stop it. As yet, no vaccine has been found. As yet, no treatment has started. And the government is absolutely out of depth to deal with this. Uh, not only that, it has affected the economy. And the economy has collapsed. And there are so many people now jobless. More and more people by the millions are going uh, into unemployment. Not only that, our nation has got abortion which is legalized. Six million babies officially are declared to be killed every year. And unofficially 10 or 11 million babies are being killed. When Cain killed Abel, the blood of Abel cried out and God intervened. Imagine 10 million babies, their blood crying out to God. What could be the state of our land? It, it, is, it is on the verge of the biggest judgment we could expect. Year after year, 10 or 11 million babies are killed. Dalits are lynched and animals are protected, but women are raped and churches are attacked. Properties are vandalized. Nuns are raped. Pastors are uh, brutally killed. Casteism, terrorism, communalism and corruption is rampant in our land. Idolatry is gaining momentum and is celebrated with greater and greater fanfare. People these days are fighting for LGBT rights and to have a normal life is considered abnormal but to embrace LGBT is considered to be the new norm and therefore laws are being modified. History books are being rewritten with distorted facts and kids are being brainwashed. The school textbooks are regularly being modified. Men and women are in living relationship uh, uh, without getting married and there is a rise in divorce. Hatred is propagated. Violence is on the rise and we should not be surprised if ethnic cleansing is initiated in course of time. Certain favorite folks of a particular group are appointed in high places like the role of magistrates, police commissioners, education chief, etc. The accounts of NGOs are frozen and their FCRA is suspended. What is the answer? In my opinion, we need a divine intervention. In the regular course of event, we may not be able to turn it. We need God's divine intervention. And that's why we need a revival, which is a divine visitation of God. As I said, I'm only a novice, but I want to present some facts. And I trust that 
you are on the same page with me as I present this issue of revival. We use different terms in an attempt to refer to such a work of God. It could be called revival, awakening, refreshing, renewal, visitation, outpouring, move of God, release of the spirit, manifested glory, etc, etc, etc. A normal evangelistic campaign is not revival. That is not what revival. In a successful evangelistic campaign or a crusade as it is called, the community outside remains untouched and the churches continue much the same as before the outreach. But when revival breaks out, God moves in the district. Suddenly, the community becomes God conscious. Spirit of God moves among the men and women. The presence of God is the supreme characteristic of a revival. The power of God, the spirit of God is moving in operation and the fear of God grips the souls of men in the neighborhood. In revival, many things happen in a short period of time. Now we need to look into history of revival. We can refer the Bible and we have many stories of revival. I'll take a few for us. In the story of the book of Jonah, there is a big revival that takes place. 1,20,000 people repented within a matter of few days and averted the judgment of God for the next 100 years. What a fantastic story. A barbaric nation like that, that of Nineveh, Assyrian nation, they had a fantastic revival within a few days by the preaching of Jonah when God intervened in that whole area. On the day of Pentecost, there was an outpouring where 3,000 people were saved on one, one day and they were baptized. It was morning 9 o'clock, they say. On that day, nearly 3,000 people were saved and baptized. Signs and wonders happened. Churches began to be planted. Ministries got established. Missionary endeavors started as a result of that particular outpouring that took place. Revival happened during Nehemiah's time, during Hezekiah's time. We have many such accounts in the Bible. In church history, over the last 2000 years, we see so many revival accounts. I will mention a few. In the early 1700, we have a fantastic record of what is known as the Great Awakening. Started in USA, but spread everywhere. And the key man behind this particular thing was a man called Jonathan Edwards. And through his preaching, through his prayer, some spark got initiated and then it went out of control. And that is why it is known as Great Awakening. The Moravian revival that took place nearly more than 200 years ago, that was a revival that affected even John Wesley, George Whitfield. It was in one of the Moravian meetings that they were supernaturally touched by God and their lives was transformed and their ministry got dramatically altered. By the end of uh, the ministry of Charles, uh, John Wesley and his brother Charles Wesley, 3% of UK came to know the Lord. In India, it has taken 2000 years to reach 3%. In one lifetime uh, of uh, John Wesley, it got impacted by 3%. Such was the impact of that particular revival. And that led to many other changes, which I will talk about a little later. In 1904, there is the Welsh revival and the key man was a man called Evan Roberts. In 1906, in a street called Ajusa Street in Los Angeles, in California, a revival broke out and the key man was an Afro-American pastor called William Seymour. And through that was birthed the Pentecostal revival. And between 1906 and now, 600 million people are the followers of the Pentecostal denomination. What a powerful impact. There is a, a explosive, spontaneous growth as a result. And the Pentecostal charismatic churches are the fastest growing churches on the planet Earth. If you think of India, same year, 1906, the Mukti Mission in Akedgaon, which is a small village about 60 kilometers from Pune in Maharashtra, a revival broke out and very powerful revival broke out. Tongues of fire rested upon the orphan girls and other girls tried to douse the fire with bucket of water, but it was not an ordinary fire. It was a fire of the Holy Ghost. And there was a revival there to suspend the school for several days. 
and the girls were repenting and then they became ambassadors raj dutika as it is called and they went around spreading the gospel such was the effect of this outpouring in same year 1906 like ajusa street in the hills of manipur one of the seven estranged states in the northeast india two times in 1930 and 1962 the whole all the mountain all those living on the mountain tops all not one or two but all of them were transformed because of the outpouring of the holy spirit that took place in punjab when praying hide came and he prayed revival broke out and a hardcore man called sadhu sundar singh he was impacted and he went around and he preached the gospel and powerful impact took place today even now i have gone and seen a particular bus stand which is called sadhu sundar bus stand and there are certain zones and areas where 100% are christians so you find these events in history in indian history everywhere these things are taking place now what are the common features of revival what are the distinctives of revival what precedes the revival first and foremost there is a deep dissatisfaction with what is happening around a deep dissatisfaction with what what is happening around at a certain time in the history of israel this is what happened the people of israel lived in disobedience they forsook jehovah worshiped of the gods they oppressed the poor fertility cults mushroomed sexual orgies were practiced evil increased the city of jerusalem was then as a judgment of god was attacked by nebuchadnezzar many were killed and others were taken captive the temple was destroyed goods plundered towns ravaged city walls were broken down gates destroyed by fire and those few who remained remained in disgrace and were unprotected while a group of people went away with uh, nebuchadnezzar some of them grew up and established business but one of the men who was there was a guy called uh, nehemiah who rose to a high position a confidant of the king there and he got a wonderful job in the palace and that by then there was another a uh, king that existed there and under the uh, rulership of this man called uh, Artaxerxes was this Nehemiah who was there and Nehemiah was became a cup bearer he had to taste the food and the wine before the king would eat just to ensure it is not poison and he became a close associate of that king but one day he had visitors come from Jerusalem his relatives and friends and they gave a report of the terrible condition that was there in Jerusalem and when Nehemiah heard this he broke down he broke down and he sobbed and he prayed and he prayed and he fasted and prayed for a period of 4 months now he need not have felt anything he was in the lap of luxury he was eating the very food the king was eating but something happened there was a deep dissatisfaction in his heart and he prayed and he prayed and ultimately he was given permission to go back and rebuild jerusalem there is a deep dissatisfaction with the situation in around as i read for us those situation of a nation of india unless it produces deep dissatisfaction and a cry from a heart comes out we will not see the required revival the more we read the newspaper the more we got to lay hands on the newspaper and start praying if we get too familiar and we get collapsed to go in the whole situation we will not be affected and it will be business as usual but there must be a deep dissatisfaction in our heart secondly there must be a personal repentance before you expect god to move in the neighborhood in the community there must be a movement of god in us for us for god to move in us there must be a personal repentance and when you spend time in the presence of god when you fast and pray and the light of god's presence is so much that you begin to see the filth of your own life it's like for a moment you are sitting in a room large room with only a zero watt bulb you can't see any dirt but suddenly 10000 watts bulbs halogen lamps are put up and then you can feel everything is filthy and dirty isaiah felt that as he saw the glory of god in the light of the god's presence he says woe to me i am undone i am a man of unclean lips and i live among people with unclean lips my eyes have seen the king the lord god almighty he repented nehemiah 
and Daniel, they also prayed. And this is what they prayed. I and my forefathers have sinned. They identified with the sins of their ancestors. They were, con they were convicted that there was nothing good living in them. Perhaps we think of Daniel as a very righteous man. But even Daniel prayed, I and my forefathers have sinned. King David wrote in Psalm 51 something like this. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression. My sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. In another place, same King David writes, Psalm 139, 23, 24. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thought. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I'm sure as you're listening to me, you may say, well, I'm not really guilty of murder. I'm not guilty of adultery. I'm not guilty of blasphemy or robbery or lying or stealing or cheating, fornication. I'm not guilty. I've lived a relatively good life. Really? Are there anything in our lives which are offensive in God's sight? What about lukewarmness? What about wrong priorities? What about lack of hunger and thirst for righteousness, for things of God? What about complacency? What about indifference? What about busyness, divisiveness, lethargy, ignorance, sin and worldliness, pride and ego and misunderstandings? Many of us have lost our first love. We no longer interested in the things of God. We neglect the daily routines, daily disciplines of Bible reading, Bible study, prayer, meditation, and church life is based on convenience. But when we draw near to God, then in all these things which are hidden inside, will surface and deep conviction and deep-seated repentance will take place and therefore a transformation a personal renewal, revival will take place inside of us. So first of all, there is a deep dissatisfaction with what is around, but there is a personal repentance, a deep quality repentance that takes place. Then the third thing obviously resulting from this is calling upon God in prayer. Calling upon God in prayer. And these days, this verse is very much often quoted, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. The key for our land to be healed, for the nation of India to be healed, is if my people, that means God's people, who are called by His name, we will humble ourselves and pray and seek His face and turn from our wicked ways. Then the revival will begin. Then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive our sin and the sin around us. And then he will heal the land. But it starts with the process of humbling ourselves. Therefore, we call out to God in prayer. In terms of Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. This is what the high and exalted one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit. Whoever is contrite and lowly in spirit, whoever has experienced a personal repentance, a deep-seated repentance, whoever is contrite and broken in heart, lowly in spirit. And then he says, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Yes, there is a precursor, there is a precedence of, uh, of uh, repentance, and as we become broken and contrite and lowly in spirit, then the Lord begins his process of reviving the spirit of the lowly, reviving the heart of the contrite. And then that revival breaks out into the neighborhood. Outpouring, on the spirit, outpouring of the spirit on the day of Pentecost was preceded by 10 days of praying in the upper room. Nehemiah fasted and prayed for four months just to get permission. And then as he faced opposition, he kept praying and eventually he succeeded and did a mighty work. In 52 days, he rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. Daniel prayed 21 days before he got the answer from the angel. William Seymour, the man who was responsible for the 
Ajusa Street Revival was led to pray five hours a day. And then he felt further stirred to pray another two more hours, seven hours a day before he experienced the Ajusa Street Revival. And yet there were others who were praying for six to seven years before that revival broke out. Charles Finney, one of the revivalists of the 1800s, saw great revival. But a team always went ahead to the next city where he was to follow them and was going to preach. They shook the city in prayer. And when Charles Finney just walked in, a revival just broke out. There is in India, we have a church called NLAG, New Life Assemblies of God, a church which is based in Chennai. And Pastor D. Mohan is the pastor of that. And that church grew from scratch. And today they have more than 30,000 people. And one of my elders called uh, Shri Kumar met him once at some conference. And during the tea break, uh, Shri Kumar asked Pastor D. Mohan, Pastor Mohan, what is the secret of your phenomenal growth? He said three things. Number one, prayer. Number two, prayer. Number three, prayer. More prayer. All that is required is pray, calling out to God. In India, in our churches, we find that uh, there is a rise in prayer. There is a 24 seven by 7 prayer. There is a men's prayer. There is a women's prayer. There is fasting and prayer. And there are, are some churches have stirred up long prayer. Even on Zoom call, the attendance is much more better. Even on Sunday afternoon, people are praying. Every alternate Saturday morning, people are praying. Some people are praying every day. Uh, whole churches, whole churches are praying. And I believe, therefore, there is something happening in the realm of prayer. In a nation too, there is a prayer movement that is taking place and is gaining moment. And people by the thousands are attending that. Pastor Mohan Philip of Delhi is organizing a massive UCPI prayer meetings. People by the thousand attend a whole night, a whole day of prayer. City transformation networks are forming in the major cities in our India where pastors and churches are coming together for transacting some business. But one of the primary things they do is prayer. Looks like we are on the verge of a revival. Hallelujah. Prayer is required and prayer calling out to God after we have felt a deep set deep deep dissatisfaction and after we have personally repented when we call out in prayer then we are on the verge of a big revival the fourth point is a desire for God's presence as he alone is the source of revival desire for God's presence as he alone is the source of revival now one of the guys in the Bible who we can envy is a guy called Moses a man who experienced so much of God. He encountered God in the burning bush. I have not met anybody who has encountered God in a burning bush. He was a man who heard the audible voice of God so many times. And God spoke to him face to face. And he carried the rod of God and saw God do mighty miracles in Egypt. He saw the manifest presence of God in the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. As he led God's people through towards the promised land, he saw amazing miracles along the journey. And uh, he had this encounter with God face to face many times as he spent 40 days and 40 nights on the mountaintop praying with him and uh, where he was sustained even without food and even without water. How much more of God can he have? But the same guy, Moses, in spite of having so much of his experience with God, he says, God, if your presence does not accompany us, we will not go any further. Then God assured Moses, yes, his angel, that means Jesus Christ, will go with his people. And even gave Moses the promise of his presence. After all these glorious encounters and all powerful assurances, powerful promises, powerful experiences, Moses still prayed, Lord, show me your glory. Wow. Wow. He's never satisfied. He wants more and more and more and more of God. Because only when you get the fullness of God can you handle your business, your job of bringing forth the revival. We need the more of God in this whole revival. Events Roberts, who was responsible for the Welsh revival, his prayer, he was a young man, only 24 years old, during which time revival broke out. And his regular prayer, which he prayed throughout the day so many times, he would say, more Lord, more Lord, more Lord. Yes, we need more of the presence of God. That is the key. And within a matter of few months, 
one lakh people came to know the Lord. When you have more Lord, yes, one lakh people in a matter of few months. 1994, the Vineyard Church in Toronto was hit by a revival on January 20th. The pastors John Arnott and Randy Clark were so desperate for a revival that in the previous two or three years, they were regularly praying for revival. And then they heard of some big time evangelist in USA and even in South America are holding big time meeting. They both went to those meetings. They sat in the audience listening to this men of God. And whenever an altar call was given for an anointing or for more of the Holy Spirit or more of God's presence, they stood in the queue and got themselves prayed over by every possible person. That's the level of hunger. That is the acknowledgement of the deep dissatisfaction. On one particular occasion, Randy Clark went in the queue, got prayed over, came out, felt Still dissatisfied, went and again, went again, went again. Four times he stood in the queue and got prayed over. And then something happened. And when they returned to Canada, back from USA in the city of Toronto, suddenly on January 24, 1994, God turned up. And that is what happens as you have deep dissatisfaction. There is personal repentance. Then there is prayer. And then you look for God's presence and God's anointing. Then something happens. King David says in Psalm 27 verse 4 and verse 8. One thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord. And to seek him in his temple. My heart says of you, seek his face, your face, O Lord, I seek. Paul also cries out in Philippians 3, 7 to 11. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from keeping the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. So, somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead. What a magnificent way to discard everything else, consider them garbage for only one thing, seek the presence of God, knowing him and therefore enjoying ultimately the power of his resurrection. Note, notice the revival is based on the accomplished work of Jesus. No man can engineer revival. It is a supreme act of God and he does it because of Jesus Christ. Christ has made the way by the power of his resurrection. And so we do not particularly seek revival, but seek Christ who then brings revival. We seek Christ, gain Christ, know Christ, consider everything else as garbage. Then our life is transformed and revival is a byproduct of that relationship. So these are the four things that we need to do. Now, when there is when the revival breaks out, what are the results of revival? First, there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, there is a deep conviction of sin and repentance around us and people are born again, left, right and central and people are transformed as they have an encounter. First, there is a revival in the church, but then it pours out all across. The prodigals start returning home. There are signs and wonders and manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. There is an impact on the neighborhood and the community as many, many people come under deep conviction. Even when they are near the church building or in the presence of God's people. You recall when Saul and his, uh, his soldiers went to arrest uh, King David, but he was in the campus of Prophet Samuel's school of prophets. Moment they entered the compound, they came under conviction and they forgot about soldiering and arresting uh, David. They began to prophesy. And so... You, there are there are grounds which are holy patches, but this is what happens when God comes down. The holiness begins to move all around. On the street called Ajusa Street, there were horse carriages and people are going by that. And on the street by, nearby that building, when they would pass by, people come under deep conviction, stop the horse, horse, horse carriage and start repenting. Wonderful way God's presence comes. 
crime rate drops down and prisons close down. In the Welsh revival, that is exactly what happened. The prisons closed down and the gambling den, pubs and movie theatres closed down. That is the exact thing happened in the Welsh revival. Swearing, cursing, using of foul language stopped completely. Did you know that in that area of Wales, there are many uh, coal mines and coal miners were affected. But the coal miners would be using mules to uh, lift their cargo from the mines and bring it out. But these mules were used to getting command which were swear words and cussing and cursing words that came from the coal miners. But now the coal miners were born again and their tongue was as it were cauterized. The lips were cauterized. Their language changed and suddenly they had to say to the mule, please kindly cordially, will you please kindly go up? And the mule could not understand this new language. The mules had to be retrained with the new language in order for them to start doing the work. What a fantastic problem we can have. May we have such problems in our land where all the foul words. These days the media and the movies are filled with foul words. Every fifth word is a foul word. And we need cleansing, but we need a revival to bring forth. When the revival breaks out, churches are packed. Even midweek services are packed and every services are held every day and overcrowded. And then uh, uh, these midweek services only finish by midnight. And a lot of worship and a lot of prayer ministry is the main emphasis. No one particular man takes prominence. Spirit of God takes prominence. And uh, there is no distinctive leader governing the meeting. It is as if the Holy Spirit is governing the meeting. The police force in Wales had no no, no work because there was no crime. Gambling dens were closed. Pubs were closed. There was no crime. They were just sitting. Didn't know what to do. But they saw crowds in the church. They went to the church, around the church building on the roads to monitor the traffic. But the traffic was so orderly that they had nothing to do. Eventually, what did they do? They joined the throngs and entered and sat down and enjoyed the revival and they got revived and many police people became part of the choir and became worshippers. Would be to God that I would like to see in our land of India when the police force will come and become part of our church choir. When we will see all these so-called riffraffs, the most dangerous people standing on the stage and platform of churches and worshipping God. Wouldn't that be a real revival? Hallelujah. We would like to see that. In 1995, the Spirit of God poured out in a city called Pensacola, Pensacola, Florida. The revival began there. It led to conversions of so many people. The police force there, if they found a first-time offender, instead of registering a case and arresting him, the first-time offender was brought to the church meeting. And often these people were gloriously born again and they did not arrest them, let them go. Because this was far more effective, long lasting and a greater transformation than trying to put them in the lockup. What a wonderful way people, even the police force can trust the churches. New churches are planted and it gives birth to missions and missionary endeavors. The Moravian revival was one example. You may recall this man called Nicky Gumbel and uh, who is pastoring a church called Holy Trinity Brompton. And he started his Alpha course, which for several years, he would run on an average about five batches a year. And for a full year, he may, in those five batches, have about 100 people. But in 1994, he attended the Toronto Revival. He got prayed over. By the end of 1994, when he came back, he began to have more people register for the Alpha course. During that year of 94, 26,700 people went through his Alpha course in his church building. As of 2015, Alpha has now spread to over 160 countries with 35,000 courses running every year with a total of 15 million attendees. How did it happen? How did those figures change to this spontaneous explosive growth? There, that is the evidence of a revival. There is another couple called Roland and Heidi Baker. They were in Mozambique for many years. They were Canadians who came there and they were exhausted, burnout stage. They went to this Toronto meeting and they got prayed over and they got revived. Particularly Heidi Baker was dramatically impacted. She, re she returned to Mozambique with supernatural strength. Her organization called Iris Global currently feeds 10,000 children a day plus 4,000 families in Malawi alone. 
its network of churches numbers more than 10,000 churches, including 2,000 churches in a very difficult area called Makua in northern Mozambique. Iris organization operates five Bible colleges and in addition, three primary school and its schools of missions in a place called Pemba. When Heidi Baker prays for dumb and deaf people, she says she sees 100% results. But she is disappointed because when she prays for the blind, only 70% she gets, she sees a success of 70%. Would be to God that something will get rubbed onto us as the revival breaks out and we can see such powerful signs and wonders. It is like a revival out of control. New songs are birthed and the hymn books are completely replaced that we see. Social reforms happen subsequently. After the preaching of Charles and John to Wesley, it awakened the conscience of the nation. A writer by name Charles Dickens wrote the famous book called Oliver Twist. It described the plight of the orphans and guess what? The conscience of the nation got aroused and those who were responsible uh, people in authority, they passed bills to protect the orphans and to regularize the orphans and therefore something new bills were passed to protect these orphans. Florence Nightingale, similar period, revolutionized the nursing profession and gave it a high dignity. William Wilberforce was affected uh, by this and it is John Wesley who wrote a letter to him, encouraged him and William Wilberforce was a member of the parliament and he affected the parliament and finally after many many years of labor managed to get a bill passed to abolish slave trade as well as rehabilitate the slaves. Besides, there were prison reforms and people who were in debts were released because of this and they were, uh, they were kept in the prison for a silly reason. They were all released because of his work uh, and for, for, they were in prison for a petty crime and Britain experienced a spiritual revolution unlike France which experienced a bloody revolution. When revival breaks out, we will not have bloodshed around us. We will have a spiritual re revolution. Hearts will be transformed. We don't have to kill anybody. Educational institutes were started. Explorers discovered new territories and also preached the gospel. Scientists made new discoveries and gave glory to God. After Wycliffe Bibles and King James Bible were published, Shakespeare wrote his literature which is considered masterpieces. Great poets and writers were affected by revival. In other words, revival affects the community and all the seven spheres of society. Affects politics, affects arts and entertainment, affects media, affects family, affects education, affects business, affects religion. We desperately need a revival. Desperately need a revival. Even as you, as I close, I want to close asking a few questions. As a result of today's talk, what do you think God is saying to you? Is God saying to you something? And how would you respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit? How would you respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit? Are you dissatisfied in a godly way by what you see around? Are you superficially or deeply affected by it? Think about it. Do you feel convicted of your lukewarmness, indifference, complacency, worldliness, loss of first love? And would you repent? Would you cry out to God in prayer and become an intercessor? Will you seek his presence and his power of his gospel? Will you be willing to seek the face of Jesus? Will you keep praying, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? And if that is so, in, if that is what you feel in your heart, if your heart is saying a loud yes, would you Commit yourself right now, wherever you are. And I say, Lord, I dedicate myself to the cause of revival. I know revival is the only answer to my life, to my church life, and to my nation. Would you, Lord, affect everything? And I commit myself to this. No one need to pray over you. It is between you and God. Call out to God. Trust in Him. And trust in the near future. We are on the verge of a revival. In the near future, you and I will be first-hand witnesses of a revival breaking out in a land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen.